On today's episode, Tesla's 2023 first quarter updates have been announced with details on the company's battery cell production, lithium refinery, and potential new version of the 4680 battery. A Cybertruck production line is shown to investors, while a hopeful Elon says deliveries will start later this year, and Tesla's energy business celebrates a 360% growth over last year. On April 19th, Tesla released their first quarter 2023 financial results, and while the numbers show that Tesla is doing well so far this year, the real meat of this financial report was the company's plans for their 4680 battery cell. Drew Baglino, Tesla's senior VP of engineering, took the opportunity to give some major details on the 4680 roadmap, which extends into 2026, as well as info on production rates, a timeframe for the construction of the company's new lithium refining plant and cathode production lines, and hints at an entirely new version of the battery. The 4680 cell was announced at the 2020 Battery Day event. The 46mm by 80mm lithium ion cell represented a huge leap in capability over Tesla's previous workhorse, the 2170 cell, which is currently used in the Model 3 and some Model Y variants. When the battery was presented, the 4680 boasted an energy increase of 5 times and a power increase of 6 times more than the 2170. The roadmap presented five areas of effort that Baglino reports are seeing progress. Cell design, anode and cathode materials, the structural battery pack, and the cell factory are all either continuing to improve at a good pace or are about to begin some crucial work. In terms of production, Baglino reports that the company increased production of the 4680 battery by 50% since last quarter, and that is just in Texas, where Tesla has an operational production line at their Austin Gigafactory, and have been working hard to expand it. Currently, the 4680 is being produced at their pilot plant in Fremont, California, and at the slowly expanding production lines at Giga Texas, but Tesla has been making slow moves to set up further production in other facilities like Giga Berlin. Baglino says that priority one for their battery program is to get the 4680 production ramped up ahead of Cybertruck production, which is due to begin in earnest sometime next year. To help with that, Tesla is about to start constructing their own lithium refinery plant. Tesla has been trying to get their foot in the door of lithium refining for a couple years now, and in November 2022, news leaked that the company was headed into private negotiations with the local government of Corpus Christi, Texas. I've found the best way to earn rewards in your spare time. Introducing today's sponsor, Ipsos I Say, a rewards community dedicated to making your opinion count for citizens and brands. They're owned and managed by market research professionals and conduct over 70 million interviews per year. When I find myself waiting around, I like to earn gift cards with Ipsos I Say. It's super easy to participate in research, answer simple questions, and earn rewards. They have so many different cards, but my favorite is Amazon because they have so many products to choose from. And the surveys are so fun because they're tailored to my interests, so I never really get bored. Let me give you a quick peek at the Ipsos I Say platform and some of the available rewards. If you want to have some fun while earning amazing rewards, click the link in my description to start earning with Ipsos I Say today. Trust me, you won't regret it. Baglino gives a huge update on that facility during the conference call, confirming that the facility will break ground in May this year and will likely start work by the end of 2023, in part at least, depending on which portions of the facility get finished first. This facility is a big deal, not only because it will be the first of its kind in North America, but also because the sulfate-free refining process uses less energy, has no acids or caustic reactive material, and is cheaper as a result of these things. The process even makes a byproduct that can be reproduced into construction materials. It's really going to be something to see in action. But it's not the only battery production infrastructure that Tesla is developing. Back in February 2022, the company applied to extend the Austin Gigafactory with a new building which was intended to house a cathode production area. Again, Baglino gives us a great update on how that project is going, saying, We are 50% equipment and 75% utilities installed at our new cathode building in Austin. He goes on to mention that the company hopes to begin using finished parts of the production line by this quarter and to be fully producing material before the end of the year. 
When Tesla unveiled the 4680 cell during the 2020 Battery Day event, they spoke briefly about their newly acquired cathode tech and how much more efficient it was. And while Tesla works with companies like Panasonic and CATL to help them round out the numbers for their battery needs, this sort of progress brings them closer to simply not needing to outsource so much. Which is great news because the structural battery pack currently in use by Tesla's Model Y is very important to the design of future vehicles. Baglino spoke mostly on what the structural pack team's focus was this year, namely streamlining production times and material costs so that the pack was more likely to be used in other vehicles because that is absolutely what Tesla wants. The structural battery pack was introduced alongside the Model Y and swapped Tesla's usual skateboard style housing under the chassis floor to being a part of the chassis itself, at least for the Model Ys made in the US. Many industry experts and Tesla users have been thinking that at the very least, the new Cybertruck will make use of this new system as well, and Baglino seems to confirm that when he mentions that the goal for 4680 production is to be ramped up ahead of Cybertruck production. That certainly implies that the two are connected. But with all the talk lately about vehicle redesigns like the Model 3 Project Highland, and discussions about a new generation of Tesla vehicle to be built at the upcoming Giga Mexico facility, it's hard not to think that the structural battery pack might be making an appearance in the designs of more vehicles over the course of the next year or so. And that leads to one last bit of news dropped on us by Baglino during his call, a new version of the 4680. Earlier, while discussing the Corpus Christi refinery, Baglino says, We are in production with not only the first generation tablet cell we unveiled on Battery Day, but a second, more manufacturable version in Texas today. Unfortunately, not a whole lot else was said about it, but that's an interesting thing to confirm during a financial update. Now, we have just been talking about the cathode changes and new manufacturing procedures Tesla is rolling out this year, so this bit about a more manufacturable version of the 4680 could just be referring to the company sharpening up their production to the point where the battery is built quicker and cheaper, which makes sense. After all, the company has been making big changes to other areas of their production techniques. The new manufacturing concepts of the Model 3 they unveiled during the March 1st Investor Day event is a good example. Tesla has started talking about making use of lithium iron phosphate batteries in the future using cheaper materials that can be recycled. Previously, the lower energy density of LFP batteries wasn't worth it, but recent advancements in their chemistry have allowed them to hold more power, and so last year Tesla made the decision to switch and very quickly updated their standard range vehicle to LFP cells. As the difference is mostly down to what materials are used for the cathode, it makes sense that Tesla might be attempting to use this new tech to make new versions of their denser 4680 cell. If that can be done, that would be yet another range boost to their cheaper vehicles. Drew Baglino is an engineer, and so most of his update focused on the hard numbers, but it's not difficult to see a pattern in what he was discussing. The 4680 is incredibly important to Tesla's upcoming production rollouts. They have several new facilities based around supporting the battery's production, and they have more than one vehicle platform using or preparing to use the structural battery pack that relies on that cell. Even their partners Panasonic and CATL are planning new factories to help supply Tesla with the amount of batteries they are going to need. Tesla's new vehicles might be taking the spotlight, but make no mistake, this year is all about the 4680. Tesla's Q1 2023 earnings call happened on April 19th, and while it was a little light on Cybertruck details, what was shared is very exciting. The EV company's highly anticipated stainless steel pickup truck has been in the news steadily as its summer start of production date closes in, and during the earnings call, one investor asked for some of the vehicle's specifications, something the community has been chomping at the bit for. CEO Elon Musk didn't offer any details, unfortunately, but it's because he says he'd like to save that for the first Cybertruck handovers, which will hopefully be at the end of Q3 this year. That might seem a bit sooner than is likely, and no one would blame us for being wary of Elon's predictions on a vehicle he's excited for, but he didn't say full production, he said handovers. We've known since late last year that Tesla is planning to have Cybertruck production start this summer and to ramp up to full production by 2024. 
That means that while there might be some undeliverable prototypes rolling off the new manufacturing lines when they turn them on for the first time, that doesn't mean that they won't have the kinks worked out by Q3. And we know that's likely because we have been getting leaks and company-controlled snippets of information on the Cybertruck this whole time. Various sightings of the Cybertruck over the past few months have shown a steady progression to the point where the most recent versions of the truck's beta look just about production-ready. Packages arriving from Italy have all but confirmed that a second 9,000-ton Gigapress is being assembled at Giga Texas as we speak, which will allow production to keep a good pace once it's calibrated. And in addition to this small update during the shareholders meeting on April 19th, Tesla provided this glimpse of the Cybertruck's pilot production line at the Fremont factory in California. Like with other productions, Tesla often uses Fremont as a testbed for new tech. So this line is what has likely been churning out the beta models we've been seeing, and the company is probably using what they've learned here to sharpen up the main lines at Giga Texas ahead of the production start. This is a pretty confident update. Lack of details aside, it's pretty clear Tesla is on track to start churning out Cybertrucks when they said they would, so we can probably start getting excited to see some real numbers very soon. Tesla has been making waves with its energy storage business this past year, and the April 19th announcement of the company's Q1 2023 financial results puts a number to that effort, a result of over 360% new deployments over last year. The company has been investing in their Megapack product ever since demand for the large energy storage system began skyrocketing last year. Major projects to install rows and rows of the battery-filled 3-megawatt-hour cabinets have popped up around the world over the course of 2022, largely due to environmental disasters and aging power infrastructure, showing that most countries are in dire need of emergency support for their electrical grids. Tesla has so many orders for the Megapack that new purchases are being backlogged into 2024, and the company has recently announced a second Megapack facility will be built in Shanghai. This plus the company's current mega factory in Lathrop, California, should produce about 80 gigawatt hours of energy storage per year once they are up and running. But this increase in deployments isn't just represented by the Megapack. Tesla's Powerwall, its power storage system for private homeowners, also added to that 360% jump in deployments. This is probably due to the success of Tesla's virtual power plant programs, which allowed Powerwall users to share energy between themselves and even sell excess energy back to the grid in emergencies. Tesla's solar business even saw an uptick, about 40% more than last year, even though sales get slower during the winter months. All in all, that's a pretty big win for Tesla. Such a massive spike in deployments means they are on the right track with their investments in new facilities, and power storage is going to be a very good source of cash for the company over the next couple of years. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter, so sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.